Hello and welcome to Talking Wealth. I'm Dale Gillen, the Chief Analyst here at Wealth Within, and I'm here today with our fantastic senior analyst, Janine Cox. How are you today? Fantastic. Thanks, Dale. How are you? Um, look, I'm excited about what's happening at the moment. The market's looking good, and we've got a super sensational topic today on stock market trading rules. Let's get into it. It's bound to be a juicy one. It is a juicy one, because I know how many times, well, when is a trading rule not a trading rule? Jeez, I wasn't quite prepared for that question. <laughs> I thought we were going to talk about what, are, why have trading rules, what are trading rules, how do you use trading rules? But we'll get to not that. when a trading rule is not a trading rule. But it is. It's an interesting question because a lot of people that I speak to, I go, "How do you trade?" And what yeah. I mean is, how do they analyze to get mm. a buy and, and sell? And I get all sorts of answers back. Ah, uh, Comsec, or I, you know, I get this report from my broker. And it says buy or, you know, if the wind's blowing the right way, I just pick a stock or I throw a dart at a board or whatever it is. And I'll well, most that's something of the time, that you can't test. So yeah. I'm, I don't care what people, what rules people will use as long mm. as they've tested it and proven that it works. Yeah, but how many people do this? And not, I'm not talking about our students. I'm mm. talking about people prior to being our students or people that you see. Oh, look, went, most people have don't have, have any concept of the fact that they should test rules. Yep. Most people have trade with some strange ideas about what a rule is. Mm, and they're not really rules. And that's mm. what I'm saying is when is a rule not a rule? Because often we see people that have surfed the internet, whether it's websites, whether it's YouTube, all mm. of that sort of stuff, and they go, oh, this person does that. Well, is it really a trading rule or is it not really a trading rule? And that's what we're talking about today is about, is, you know, what it, why have rules, what are mm. rules, um, yep. why, why they're important, um, you know, how you incorporate rules into your trading plan and strategies, a whole range of different things. And it doesn't matter whether you're a new trader or whether you're trading. We've got people um, that I meet that are trading FX, they're trading Bitcoin, they're trading all sorts of things, they're day trading, intraday trading. And what I'm, what we just said before mm. applies to all of those because I don't know how many times I've met people that are trading Bitcoin or trying to day trade and they they don't have rules. They don't have a trading plan. Mm. They don't have a proper strategy. Well, some of them think, oh, look, that wouldn't apply to me because I'm just trading for a few days. That's rubbish. <laughs> you know? Exactly. It is, and this is the thing. Isn't so it? Most, we, most good rules will work over different time frames. Yeah, but I think a lot of people have this misconception you need to be trading all of the time too mm. and they need to be trading every day or, you know, during the day and sitting in front of their computers or having it on their mobile phones and watching the screens and <laughs> what's going to happen, all that sort of stuff. So there's a whole lot of misconceptions and myths around trading. Definitely. What it is. Now, I know we did a podcast recently mm. um, all about, you know, trading and what, and people who have been trading and maximising your profits and mm. everything else. But I want to get into stock market trading rules. So let me ask you, what constitutes a trading rule? What's the definition? Of the, instead of the Webster's Dictionary, I want the Janine's Dictionary of what a trading rule is. To me, a trading rule is something, one, that, that you actually understand, two, that you know how to use and apply well, mm -hmm. and three that you've tested. Um, it's just something that allows you to trade a stock and have a, a certain probability in terms of knowing what the outcome is going to be for you. So if you are going to buy a stock, when do you buy? How do you buy? If you're going to sell a stock, um, what is um, what are the decisions uh, what, that you make? I mean, how do you make that decision? That's really what a rule is. It, it allows people to make decisions and it, and it should, if used right, correctly, take the stress away from trading. It should. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And it takes the emotions and guesswork mm. out of trading. So, you know, I do like what you're talking about, but it, a trading rule is about probability, mm. which is one of the important things you said, is does it increase the probability or the likelihood of you having a successful outcome? Mm -hmm. So that's number one. Obviously, you said tested. Well, that's a proper mm -hmm. trading rule, but I mean, you could say a a trading rule could be anything yeah. that somebody deems it is. But like don't trade a proper, on a Tuesday? Yeah. So mm -hmm. a proper trading rule could mm -hmm. be something that you've actually really understood and tested well and knows that actually works and has a sort of, like you say, a probability of success over time. Mm. It doesn't mean that it will, even if it is a good trading rule, it doesn't mean that it will continue to work the same way over time every time you trade it. And that's what... Mm. People really need to understand, I think, about rules and okay. accepting the fact that it isn't 100% necessarily. Nothing it can is. be. Sometimes rules can work 100% of the time. Mm -hmm. We've had plenty of rules that do that, but then it's 
times stocks will change the way that they trade and you have to be flexible and be able to adjust to that. And so that's why it's really important to understand the process of working out rules and what the best rules are and uh, and really understand how to apply them so that you know how to fix it. If it I think stops that's working. critical what you just said is, you know, you can have a rule that's working and this is the challenge mm. that a lot of people trade in the market have is they'll watch a YouTube video and get a set of rules, if we can do that in inverted commas, and they might work for a few weeks or a month or two or mm. maybe even longer, maybe a year because the market's really, really bullish. But when the stock changes personality, those rules don't work anymore and the trader is not aware of uh, that situation until they start losing lots of money. And But they're also not mm. understanding enough to be able to change the rule. Yeah. And I think we see so many people like that. They go, oh, I was trading for a while and I was making money and now I'm not. I mean, um, a simple thing like if you're steering yeah. your car down a road and it starts veering off to the left or right, then you know that there's an issue with your steering, don't mm. you? Uh, well, you could be. But you can bring it back. Manually, you can bring that back into play into mm. driving straight again. So it's the same with trading. If you're trading and all of a sudden it goes out of kilter, you can bring those results back. It's just a matter of time and mm. deciding what or using your analysis to work out what the rules are that will allow you to do that. Okay. Now the next tough question I've got is, are all rules about a buy, sell? Or do you can have rules that are not necessarily a about buy and sell, but part of the process? Well, it depends. I mean, generally rules are about buying and selling, but mm. you can have things that you watch for um, that could be like, okay, we're waiting to see this first and then we're waiting for the rule to trigger. Yep. Uh, that could be a way that you incorporate that sort of thinking into your – It's a, that's more about a trading strategy, yep. bringing it all together in the strategy. So it's, the rules are pretty simple. It's a black and white rule. It's either you're in and you're out and that's how you trade. The other parts – get wrapped around it and it becomes more about what, when we talk about the art and really bringing that flavour into the way that you want to trade. But another key thing you just said then, and, and I know a lot of people miss some of the, the gems that come out of your mouth. And, and Well, you talk more than me. Well, I do, but there's <laughs> wisdom comes out of my mouth. You get gems, I get wisdom. Yeah. <laughs> but I know people miss some of the real, real key stuff because they're maybe enjoying the podcast or the mm. video or whatever else but they miss the key words. And what you said was black and white, mm. not just, oh, yeah, mm. it's a guess. Yep. And this is where, I, again, I find a lot of people with their, again, inverted commas, rules, it's more fudge, it's more grey, it's mm. not necessarily black and white. I know when we start mentoring new students who are on our first levels of our course or and they send us rules and I go, that's not a rule. And they go, what do you mean? I said, it's not properly articulated. And they go, what do you mean? And I said, I need to, I should be able to give the rule to any person on this planet mm. as long as they can read. Yep. They should be able to understand it. They may not understand the actual technique, let's say like trend lines like we talk about in my mm. book. They may not understand how to draw a trend line, but they will understand when this does this above a trend line, mm. that's a buy. Yep. So if that's the filter to when I'm talking about it with the, 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 the traders we're mentoring and I go, no, we need to articulate those rules very, very black and white. There should never be ambiguous rules at all in a trading strategy. But yet most of the people I find have quite ambiguous rules mm. or wishy-washy or very complex rules that it's sort of like there's got multiple tentacles going out of it and it's it, no wonder they make mistakes. Yeah, I see that with people who have used mm. these programs online that mm. have um, maybe they've had to program into it what they want it, it to look for and then they come out with all these multi-layered rules which, like you say, you could trade it with, with it once and then when you go to trade with it again you'll think, now what did I mean by that? Mm. And and you sometimes if you do things like that, then you could forget your own rules. Mm. That's why Dale's saying it's so important to have that written out black and white. A good test of that is actually just to give it to someone else and say, look, you know, what would you do if I give you this set of rules? What does that mean? Mm. So that somebody then um, who knows about trading can then say, well, that means that you enter based on this, this and this. Yep, that's exactly what I mean. So then I know that it's been documented right. Mm. And look, the amount of times that when we used to go through student emails um, for our, through our support service and then and find that someone would have just write, oh, look, the rule's written like this. And we were really, um, you know, <laughs> I don't want to use the word, but we were really um, particular 
mm. about exactly how they've written those rules out and to the word almost at times. Yeah. I know when we get students and they go, oh, I'm going to use the art of trading. And I went, the art of trading has rules too. Mm. And they go, what do you mean? And I went, well, just because you want to see, we teach people to use all of their knowledge all of the time and all of the rules, tools, strategies all of the time. And when something changes personality, you've got to adapt mm. art of trading. Mm -hmm. We need to adapt to what's happening today, this week, this month, and the psychology of the market, which mean, might mean changing an entry or an exit, but it doesn't mean not having rules mm. and just guessing. And that's where so, we see some So think about do. this for a minute. I mean, there's a process and mm. we, and one of the things that I used to like about the way you think is when we came back to work. don't like what I think now? I still like the way that he thinks. <laughs> okay. So when we go to a workshop, we talk about people's journey, yeah. right? Mm. And from A to B and say, well, look, you know, if, if you're at this point of your journey, that's okay, you know. Be honest about where you're at with, with your journey. But when people are applying rules, it's not until – I think that's a really good yardstick. If people mm. – the way that people apply rules will tell them and the way they think about it, the way they document it, really tells them where they are on their trading journey. Mm. It's as simple as that. And like because the art is something that you develop, it's you, what you evolve into – when you've got the confidence to do that. Okay. So it's about knowing that these rules work in such a way, but I can use that. That's always there as my backstop, but I need to actually watch what the stock does and understand it. That's more the art thinking, but a lot of people think, oh, I'm going to use the art. Oh, well, I'll just get out because it's oh. there's a trend line there or get out because the stock's fallen 10% or something. A lot of something. people using the art is what I would call an excuse for making a guess. Mm. And, you know, to me, an excuse is a lie covered with the skin of reason mm. because the markets or the stock's gone up or down fast and then they make this emotional decision. They go, hey, Dale, I just used the art. I went, no, <laughs> that's not what you did. You were fearful or greedy mm. and that's why you use the art. Okay, but yeah. just on that point, right? Yeah. I mean, we have to think about that person's path and, and their development going mm. forward. Now, yeah. if somebody is saying that, it's telling you where they're at. It, it is. They're and not confident okay. enough in their in their rules, their strategy, yep. or in themselves. Because can you tell me, like, the course yeah. is giving them that structure that they Correct. can always go back to. So, like, sometimes when a trader's going through their journey, they'll zigzag away from the line. They do. If we're thinking about going from A to B or up, down to, uh, you know, from sounds low to like, high. This sounds right? like you driving. Oh, it's not about me driving. Um, okay. So, look, we, um, we've just didn't, let didn't, me focus. You didn't disagree. <laughs> All right. And so if we're going on this journey as a trader, we're going to, um, I guess, divert our attention from what we should be doing sometimes. Some people mm. will, are completely focused and they are able to pick it up from the word go and are much more, I guess, you know, mechanical about things and that they're, Correct. they're more likely to stay closer to the line. Yep. But what I'm talking about is when people d zigzag away from the line it's really just about expanding your brain because you're getting more reference points as you're going. So, okay, you might make a mistake and say, okay, I didn't follow my rule. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. But what would you do then if you haven't followed your rule and mm -hmm. the stock has actually traded in a certain way? Now you've got to make a decision as a trader. Are you going to use particular rules to get back out? How are you going to manage it going forward? And there's some other mm -hmm. rules that you can incorporate you need to be able to think like a trader at that point. Yeah. Um, and that's really another step, I guess, in that journey across as a trader because yeah. nobody's going to do things perfectly. No, they're not. And we don't yeah. expect them to do it perfectly. Mm. And we expect like children, you expect them to explore. Exactly. You know, and explore what works for them because what works for some traders won't work for other traders. And Correct. We yeah. know that. And that's where we talked about in that other podcast that we did is, you know, people that go to those weekend workshops and get this tick box, mm. oh, this, 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 go and buy and sell. Mm. And they try and follow that and that's why they fail so often. And, we, you know, the, the ones, the trading courses out there that do the most amount of marketing are the most mm. crappy courses out there because they're just turnover and they're not worried about giving people good solid rules. It's more smoke and mirrors mm -hmm. and not enough depth for them to, it, whilst it looks great, there's not enough depth for them to fully understand the rules and the process but I know research, we've done research, we've read tons and tons of research on this, that people that follow their rules and their trading strategy or their trading plan mm. are much more successful. Yep. They fail mm. and we, we read so many um, documents done by scientific studies about this, about cognitive bias, all those mm. sorts of stuff. 
um, you know, financial um, psychology is that everybody that fails or the pe- most mm-hmm. of the people that fail, they go, yeah, I didn't follow my rules. So it's about getting the right rules and following them and you'll be successful. And that's why, but I want to get into, mm. obviously this is all about stock market trading rules, yes. but I want to get into the subject, subject of why have rules because we've sort of been skirting around why have rules. So why have a rule or why have rules? What does that do for your trading? I think one of the comments that comes from a lot of people when they learn how to trade with us is that they've got structure. Yep. So having the rules gives the trader the structure and the discipline. It's about decision making. Because Why is that good? Because it gives people confidence to know what am I going to do? It's like any situation because the yep. market is one of those things that changes all the time. Yep. So in your, when you're driving a car, I'm kind of coming back to that car analogy, mm-hmm, when you're driving a car... At times you have to make decisions as you're going along the road. Am I going to keep going in this lane? Am I going to change lanes? Oh, someone, the other day, somebody just zigzagged really sharply in front of me and I was in a um, a, a car that was a loan car that mm-hmm. was given to me because I took my car in for a service. So I had to make a real quick decision then about putting the brakes on because, and you look in the mirror to see if anyone's behind you, but it's all of that sort of, you know, quick thinking that comes into it. And that's, yeah. that's so that you know how to respond um, in a situation, that's really, to me, the point of it. Okay, so in con- in the context of trading, it's about whatever the market's doing, you know how to respond, which mm. is the same as what you're talking about, is in, when you're driving, we know yeah. how to respond. You know, we've done it that many times, changing lanes, slow, slowing down, speeding up, all sorts of different um, actions that we take and micro decisions we make, mm. thousands of them. And if we actually studied how many decisions you make while driving a car just five minutes, it's in the hundreds of decisions. Mm. Now, you're not going to make that many in trading over, you know, five minutes, but it's about the confidence that you said. Exactly. Having, having confidence having confidence in your rules mm-hmm. and having confidence in yourself to follow the rules. They're the two things. One of the biggest things we find with people new to the market or ones coming to do our course is they lack confidence in both of those. Mm. And often I'll say to people, well, one or two things yeah. is happening or both. You uh, don't have confidence in your rules or you don't have confidence in yourself. Well, how do you have that? I mean, you can't automatically That's have that. That's where people, you test what you're talking about. And the about. funny thing is that people mm. think that they have confidence in themselves, but it may be in other areas. And this is where- And it doesn't translate. As trainers, we have the biggest challenge because mm. people think that they should automatically be good at doing this when it's a bit, it's a skills-based thing. You have to actually learn it from the grassroots first and then confirm that you actually, what you know, really. Okay. Mm. So what happens when people have no rules? It's all over the place. Yeah. So what's the result they get? Um, look, I think for a while, if the market's bullish, it probably won't matter. It'll hide those. It'll hide things. that. Yep. And I think, you know, that they'll just think, oh, well, I've just placed a few trades and the stock price went up. I sold it for 10% or whatever, and I've made a profit and that's how I'm trading. Okay. But when the market turns and it goes down, they've got no idea what to do. And often that's when you get situations where people, if the stock price falls, they, they're fearful. They can't sort of just sit in the fact that, okay, I've, the stock's pulled back a bit. That's okay. Um, I've got some rules to get out with, you know, my strategy. But they're panicking mm. the whole way that the stock is coming down. Now, who wants to live in that situation? You yeah. don't want to be in that. Mm. Yeah, well, if you're in that position where you don't know or you're fearful of what the movement mm. of the stock is, that means that's a big sign that you don't know. Now, that's Real, why so many people leave the stock market. They do. It's they just, start to trade. And and mm. probably the biggest example we have of that is the COVID meltdown where so many people, um, especially younger people, yeah. that started in the stock market from March 2020 because they were, we were in lockdown, they'd been made redundant, lost their job, all yeah. of that stuff. And so they needed to make income. So we saw a lot of them jump into the market. We saw that GameStop and Robinhood trading low. and all these apps. The mar- they the got market a profit. And they started making good mm. money. They And we had so many people commenting on our YouTube channel. Mm. Our YouTube channel blew up basically. And all these people became overnight experts because they were making money and they're going, wow, this is so easy. This is really, really mm. easy because the market was bullish for 12 months roughly. Mm-hmm. But the last two years, Since June those people have gone into, they've crawled back into the woodwork mm. in terms of they're non-existent anymore because mm. they're struggling because they didn't have proper rules. 
So they were under the illusion that they had good rules and they understood what they were doing. And the other thing that that yeah. sort of movement in the market, it, it, when you're first learning to trade, someone said to me when, when I was first learning to trade, the advantage of a market falling when you're learning to trade is that you not, you don't get set up with that false sense of what you can yeah. do. When the market's so bullish like that, the expectation is then that you think the market's going to do it again. Yep. And when it doesn't, um, you can't adjust your sales because you don't know where you are. Mm. Mm. So what happens when people have no rules is inconsistency, mm -hmm. okay? It's losses, too. It's um, fear, mm. greed, mm. the coming All to that. it, so emotional decision-making. I'm going to ask you a question. If, if the market were to drop out of bed today, would you be fearful? No. If it took off today, would you be greedy? Yes. Okay. So what's more dangerous? I'd say it's probably more dangerous to be um, fearful because you're going to, in actual fact, it can do a lot of damage to mm. that person mm. if they don't understand rules because if a market goes up and you're greedy, you'll be fine for a while in a bullish market. Yep. It's buoyant. But if you're fearful in a, in a down-moving market, you're more likely to suffer bigger losses in the down-moving market because... Okay. Not if you're out of the market and you're not, you don't have any exposure, but mm. people are often fearful because they've actually got investment in the market and they don't know what to do. Okay. So if somebody mm. today is watching this podcast on YouTube, because we're now recording these, so if you're listening to us on iTunes or whatever the podcasting app you use, you can watch this recording on our Wealth Within TV. So just go mm -hmm. to YouTube, type in Wealth Within and it'll come up. Actually, just um, before you do, this yeah. is probably the most forgiving time, believe it or not, mm. to be in the market. Because you and I both think that we're in a bull market yep. and the, the, a lot of people don't think yep. that at the moment. Correct. And so if the if the if if everything right, keeps rising to the top, um, it's probably going to forgive a lot of mistakes that people could make from here on in okay. going up. One of yep. the questions I want to ask you is if somebody is trading right now yep. and they're listening to this podcast and they've got trades on and they've got doubt or fear in their mind, what would that tell you about their rules? What, are you saying that they would actually tell you that they've got doubt? No, yeah, so they, they're, they're having, no, I'm just saying they're having doubt or mm. they're fearful about what's going to happen with the stocks that they Oh, have. with the stocks or the stock market. Yeah. So they've got, they're either doubting what's going on mm -hmm. or they've got doubt um, in themselves or they're doubting the, the, with the, uh, they're uncertain about the price action and they're doubting and having a bit of fear around the marketplace right now. Mm. What would that tell you about their rules? Um, just that they don't trust them. They don't have a confidence mm. in their rules yet, which okay. that's, I mean, it could be someone who... I'm just trying who, to give people a bit of a reference point to say, well, oh, mm. oh, that's me they're talking about. And if it's me, that, if you're sitting there thinking, well, that's me they're talking about, then that's the signpost to say all that, you know, that red light flashing and the alarm going, and, 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 warning, Will Robinson, well, yeah, you know, we, you know, danger, danger. And that's what we need to get past people and say, mm. well, if that's you, then you need to start a process to get solid rules. Mm -hmm. So what's the difference between having good rules, any rules, and the wrong rules? Because people have some good rules. Some I think we touched on that before. Rules. I mean, the mm. difference is more or less about, it's not just yeah. the result. It's more about how the person is feeling. So they might have the perception that, that they're, what they're doing is right. They don't even know. But they don't know. Yeah. They're not aware, so they don't have the awareness. Some they people tested. Yeah, well, some people have the awareness. Maybe they've listened to us or they've um, heard things online or they've seen things and they know that probably what they're doing is not, you know, they're not proper mm. rules. It's not exactly yeah. right, but they're just, for whatever reason, they're stuck yeah. where they are okay. in their thinking. Cool. And then there are other people who are going along and that they really, the difference between um, where they are and having good rules is that it's just a lack of knowledge simply. Yeah. Mm. Now, in the in the beginning, or in our first module of our Diploma of Share Trading and Investment course, mm -hmm. we say, trust nothing, test everything. Yes. Why do we say that? Just because it's part of that process of really internalising everything. Mm. So if you just take what somebody says and then you go and do it, when the shit hits the fan, so to speak, and I do oh, swear. You use that S -word. I never do, but just drop one. But if that does, mm. then um, I should not say never because that's my favourite word. It is your favourite word. Um, when that hits the fan, then 
you know, they don't know what to do. Mm. Um, so that's a big issue, I think. Mm. One of the, and that's when people sort of, that's when they come to us often when yeah. they when they start to get really stressed about things. But it's usually after people have lost money. Yeah, we get a lot of people who are inconsistent mm. in their trading. They've lost money. They made a made a mot so you know out of the COVID low or something like that. And then they've started giving it all back and they don't understand why and they come and do our course. That's the big thing. Yeah. You know, like at times the market will give you money and at times it will yeah. take it back. But the smart ones Before it then it's gives it again. The, the, our yeah. tuition fee is like one trade mm. for most it's people. It's just a it's process, just, isn't it, to go through Two fifths the bugger all in the end of the scheme of things for learning how to trade for the rest of your life. But I want to get it's into... It's actually really easy to say yes. People mm. make it harder for themselves. They do. But by saying no, but, but that's because but saying they doubt yes themselves is, too, because yeah, they, they've struggled with their trading, inconsistency, lost money, but then they doubt whether they could do it. So then they put that value on getting mm. a great education that will get them to where they want to go. And, and really, I think we talked about it a few weeks back. It's about they need to make the decision of where they want to be, not where they are. Imagine if we started a thing where everybody said, yes, you know, we walk into the office and I, I say to you, Oh, a cup of coffee, please. And you say, yes. yes. Um, how about that l lunch today? Yes. yes. How about, and someone else says to you. I think I'd be broke. I'd be buying a coffee lunches <laughs> every day. So I want to move on. Just keep saying to, yes. Yeah, I want to move on to, <laughs> we get people that are using rules out of context. Mm. So whether that's long-term, short-term, medium-term. So I might use a short-term rule to, for buying long-term mm. and vice versa. So I want to get into rules for specific purpose because there are rules. Oh, like that people you try to apply trend lines to the daily charts. Yeah, which is <laughs> like, well, why would you do that? You know, but they don't understand. And this is where it's really, really dangerous to pull a rule out of a book or pull mm. a rule from a, a YouTube video because you need, it's not just content, it's context. And the context of trading can be daily charts, weekly charts, monthly charts, short term, medium term, mm. long term, cash flow trading. Capital wow. gains trading. Where do you get all that? It's just it's, look, I just I found it under a rock, and yeah. I just sort of just throw it out there for you. <laughs> but there are, and I know there are times, you know, like uh, I've, I've probably said this story to the viewers before, the listeners and viewers before, is that one day I met this person, and they were trading, and I, and they were, they were talking about their trading, and they were trading blue chip stocks. And I went, "You're not doing very well." And they went, "No, how do you know?" And I went, "Well, the stop loss or the exit strategy you're using." is a volatility indicator based for very short-term intraday trading. So you're trying to use it for more medium-term trading on blue chip stocks. It's never going to work. Mm. And they went, That's oh. crazy. And then I remember I was at a Perth Expo one day and this guy was chatting with me with his wife um, and he was talking about using this analysis method and et cetera. And I said, well, you know, um, what do you do? And mm. he goes, oh, I day trade. And I said, how the hell do you day trade doing exactly what you just said? Because that's what you're using is for long-term trading. It's got no purpose in day trading. And he looked at me and I said, you wouldn't be very good at it. Mm. And his wife looked at me. He got offended, mm. went off in a half, and wouldn't. she came up to me and gave me a hug and said he needed to hear that because mm. I agree with you, Dale. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is putting he just thought he was right because he'd seen that somewhere, but he'd never tested it. Mm. and he wasn't using things in the right context. So we do have specific rules. Now, some rules are transferable across different areas. So, you know, whether it's stocks, FX, yeah. options, CFDs, you know, commodities, we can use rules right across those. So it's we do get people saying, oh, can you teach me how to trade FX or can mm. you teach me options or can you teach me CFDs? Well, no, we'll teach you to trade then you apply those rules to whatever market and mm. you have a driving analogy. I've got one too. Because if I know I can throw you the keys to any car in the world and you can drive it because you know how to drive. Well, you pretend to anyway. <gasps> you're a bit zigzaggy and Jeez. it's a bit scary sometimes. I can't reach him to kick him. You're a bit scary. I call you the AB driver, accelerator, <laughs> brake, and you Not. do it. You do that a lot. Um <laughs> If that was the case, I'd be replacing my brakes all the but time. But you can. But you can drive. You can drive anywhere in the world and drive <laughs> any vehicle in the world because they're all this, roughly the same. They've got steering wheels, accelerator, you know, brakes. So what are you trying to say? You're what I'm get trying to, to say point? is once you understand how to trade, then it doesn't matter the vehicle. Mm. There's no specific things for options or specific things for FX. Yeah, it's or, a process of learning. It's a process of learning and then applying the rules and tools for the right market. So mm. if you're trading shorter term, you need stuff that's a lot more 
sensitive to market movements. Mm -hmm. If you're trading more medium to longer term, then you need things that are less sensitive to market movements. So what are those um, mm -hmm. rules? So that's why okay. there's specific rules for doing that. Now, and we're not going to go into each, lots of different specific trading rules because mm -hmm. we teach all of that in our course Okay, anyway. what, what's your top um, three rules that what? you like? I'm not going to tell you that. I've Why been not? giving away the, the jam and toast. And Come on, the, you're doing the course anyway. No, I wrote it. We all wrote it. You, you give your rules in the course, some of your rules. I do, I do. But, you know, to me, to me, trend analysis is number one. It's key. It's momentum. Mm. Absolutely, absolutely. And whilst that's, I'm not actually articulating a rule, but trade with the trend. The trend mm. is your friend. They're the, the statements that come out. So that's my one of my favourite rules. Yeah, I remember you, I remember that was a big one for you. Huge mm. because so many Actually, people Actually, can, really I, got can I share another one of your rules? Mm, if you must. Um, if it looks like a trend line and smells like a trend line, then it's probably a trend line? Well, I say if it looks like a dog and smells like a dog, it's probably one. But, yeah, you're right. Because, <laughs> um, you know, I used to say to people, if you've got a rule on a pencil, that's all you need to learn how to yeah. trade. And, and if you get my first book, How to Beat the Managed Funds, by 20%. You can get it for free. Just go to our website, just mm. pay the shipping and we'll send it out to you. It gives you rules on how to do, you yes. know, apply some of this sort of stuff like trend lines and some other rules, but rules for developing portfolios, rules for finding stocks, rules for buy and sell, all of those things. And to me, momentum is key. And so many people do, they don't understand momentum and they don't understand when they're trading with momentum and when they're not, because they're trying to trade often false rallies or mm. suckers rallies, we talk about it, uh, and they think the momentum's up, but it's not because mm. they don't understand. And that's why there's differences, not all rules about buy and sell. It's about well, what direction. Direction yeah. is key. Number one mm. thing that I have on my mind all of the time is direction first. Yes. The second thing is strength. Mm -hmm. How much strength is there behind the move that I'm talking about? Mm. So like if you want to go from Melbourne to Sydney and you want to catch a train, you don't want the train to be going to Adelaide. So you want direction first, but you also don't want to get on Puffing Billy that's going to take you 27 hours to get there. You want the fastest diesel train that's going to get you there. So therefore, that's the momentum. Mm. So direction and momentum. Uh, and the other that's one That's a really good way of explaining and, it. And, and to me, it's also about volatility as well. So you want to look at that liquidity. They're mm -hmm. the three key rules first, even before I get into buy and sells. Mm. You know, buy and sells, trend lines, whatever else that we okay. talk about. But you need to do all that foundational stuff to work out, you know, strength, direction and volatility and risk is all their key for It's me. interesting, see, because I'm, mm -hmm. for me, it's more about um, fit for purpose first. So mm -hmm. is, does the stock actually suit what I want to do? Mm. So that's the first thing. You and I will always look at, to, yeah. at the stock from a big picture point of view because some people are just naturally driven to pattern formations and like to see well, things. It's, it's a human, it's yeah, whereas, hardwired in humans for pattern Whereas a lot of people who have been conditioned to look at the daily charts, they just miss so much, mm. don't they? So that's the first one for me. But the next one for me um, is more about, there's a strategy that we teach in the Trading Mentor course, which um, I pulled apart years ago yeah. when we first started looking at that. And that for me is one, because that's like a foundation on which I can build any other strategy I want to well, build. How many people have done the trading mentor course, mm. use that strategy and paid for the trading mentor course and paid for the diploma course? That's right. Mm. For this one little strategy and for under two grand, that's like dirt cheap. Nobody can say they can't afford that. Yeah, exactly. Um, but, so that so that's a really good one um, mm. in terms of, um, you know, the actual trading rule itself, but not... You know, I guess because the scientist in me loves the back testing, I've always enjoyed that process. Mm -hmm. To me, the rule is if it stops working, then you have to go back and, and actually work, out, work why. out why. And um, it's not about finding the the a rule that's going to give you a hundred percent win rate because there's only very few stocks that will give you a hundred percent win rate on a strategy. And if you're getting that on lots, then the chances are you're actually missing some trades or there's an error in the back testing that you've got um, because that probability thing, there'll be one or two trades over a 10 year period that go the other way. Mm. I want to get into a different thing that a lot of people may not have thought about. And, and we constantly talk to our students and our graduates about trading is 80% psychology, 20% mm. technique or the science. So trading is science and art. And the psychology is so important and we have psychology rules, which to mm. me are all part of your trading rules. Yeah. Just because, you know, uh, you know, people go, oh, I use a, you know, 
15 period or 13 period moving average or 21 period moving average or 13. It's all technical it's based. It's all technical based, but mm-hmm. that's not psychology. And so they go, oh, like I use an RSA. But we said that the, the trading rules are black mm. and white. Trading rules this are black is and white. addition. And psychology rules, rules are still... Reasonable. It's your own personal rules. Correct. It's mm. like, you know, if you've had, if you're not feeling well, don't trade. Mm. You know, if you've had three losses in a row, stop trading, work out mm. what you just said, work out what was going wrong and, and try and adjust that because it could be the market or stock telling you it's changing personality. Yes. So therefore look at that sort of stuff. If you just had a wife, with uh, wife, if you had an argument with your partner, <laughs> probably not a good time to trade because you're not going to make rational decisions or, or dispassionate decisions and I remember, remember we had that uh, CF, um, was he a CFA came in, a certified financial mm-hmm. analyst came into, we got him into our business and he analysed something like 300 trades that we'd done mm. and he went, oh my God, and he's mm. a highly technical dude and he goes, wow, it's everything's just black and mm. white and dispassionate and we went, yep, mm-hmm. that's the way it should be. And he was, he was, when he came in, he thought he was going to break our trading system and think it wouldn't work because mm. he wasn't big on technical analysis. Yep. But then he realized after a while he modeled so many different portfolios and entries and exits that we're doing. He just goes, wow, that's the best way to do it. Mm. You're getting better returns. And we've had that numerous times from different people coming in. I know I've had traders, um, you know, do give me spreadsheets. Mm, with and all these their people, rules. these people were, you know, maths genius and they're modeling and they're going, wow, this is really good what you mm. do. And I went, and they go, it's, if you follow the rules, it's impossible to lose money over a long period of time. I went, absolutely. I guess That's the, why we have that. I guess the biggest, um, you know, misanoma that people mm. have when they come into the stock market is that they can use one rule and that can apply to their, they can just trade. Oh, when I see that sort of formation or pattern or whatever it is, I can just trade with that every time, no, it's like put which just, is not. I've got one way to drive a car flat out. Yeah, that's, that's not right. going to work either. Well, you so, seem to think it works for me. It does work for you. But no, I said I'll accelerator and break. I, you have two rules, accelerator, flat out, break, flat out. That's how you work. I used to, I, I feel like one of those, you know, bobbleheads in the car when I'm driving with you. Well, when you're driving and I'm just sitting there. But anyway, <laughs> psychology rules, we need to have them. And that's where you people, we talk about trading journals, write down what you're feeling, what's happening in your mind and come up with a set of rules around that so that you're trading in the best possible frame of mind to get the best possible outcome for you. Mm. And that's really what I'm, uh, we're talking about here. Yep. Now, I, I know we need to change rules from time. I know we need to add rules yeah. to different times, different stocks. You, and you can't just blanket say, well, I've got... Commonwealth th- Bank works this way. Mm. Yeah, and but BHP may not. Mm. So you can't just put one trading plan or one trading strategy over all 500 stocks in the yeah. All News Index. We have different rules for different stocks and we share people mm-hmm, how exactly. to actually pull all those together because each stock has different volatility and momentum. Everything we talked about before is Telstra mm. is completely different to a Rio, mm. completely. So you trade it differently than that and same with Commonwealth Bank. So, but how do you know when you've got the wrong rules? Well, look, it's, a, it's different for different people. Yeah. You know, it, it's, a trader could set a rule that says, once I have three losing trades in a row, then I need to go for this particular stock. Then yeah. I need to go back to the drawing board and work out what I need to change or add or um, take away from the yeah. rules that I've got. Okay. Mm. So, but how do people, when? Are you just talking someone who doesn't really understand rules? Well, I'm just talking about people who doesn't, they believe they've got rules. So how do they recognise they don't have the right rules? Like they think they have, they're under that misconception. I don't. Th- I think a lot of people won't recognise it until the market falls significantly. Okay, until it mm. bites them on the backside. Yep. And we see that commonly. It's, it's that that cognitive bias, and we talked about. Mm. Remember, we did a video on called the Dunning Kruger effect for oh, yes. talking wealth. Yep. Um, so if you don't, uh, it's, we did a, a video. Mm-hmm. It's, well, I think it was about an hour long video in talkingwealth.com. So if you're not haven't seen talkingwealth.com, please head over there. Um, it's like three dollars fifty something a week, mm. like better than a cup of coffee. But it'll teach you how to be more successful, whether you're entrepreneur, business, personal, um, investing, whatever. There's, it's not just stock market; it's a lot of stuff. But there's, it's called Dunning Kruger. If you are a, a, um, a member, have a membership for TalkingWealth.com, type it into the search button and go Dunning Kruger effect, mm-hmm. and we'll explain it in terms of the stock market. But you can Google it anyway and just understand. Yeah. So when the do you go and get new rules? When, when when I get new rules, really when when things don't 
they're not working properly. Mm. So I may not be making as much money or the the rules are not triggering correctly. And I'm trying to explain this in the right way but not make it over complex. I mm. know there are times when I'm looking at stocks and I go, okay, when this does this, I'm going to buy it. But mm. then it doesn't do it. And they're not the rules aren't triggering for some reason. Okay, so you want to understand why. So I want to understand why they're mm. not triggering. And it's generally the market is it's telling you mm. it's not a great time to trade. Um, and so or the stock is triggering or the market is triggering, but then it's reversing pretty quickly and coming back and you're getting stopped out a little bit. Mm-hmm. So that's like, mm, and we've seen the last couple of years after after COVID. So you're in for, in a trade and then it pulls back and you get stopped out really quickly. And it does unusual things because, as mm. you said, we're, we're all hardwired for pattern recognition. So it's like, um, you know, the last couple of years we've seen a lot of sideways, big sideways pattern on the marketplace after this, mm. you know, the COVID dip, COVID bull market then sideways for a couple of years, which has been really tricky for a lot of traders. But the pattern is really unusual. You know, we can go back um, 100 years on our market and I've not seen patterns like we've seen in the last couple of years. So, but the market will go back to being normal. But when you want to, the rules, it's it's telling me the rules need to be adjusted and changed. And I remember quite a few years ago, I was speaking for the ASX at um, one of their um, lunchtime seminars. Mm-hmm. And I did, I've done a few presentations for the ASX. I don't do them anymore. Um, and I remember talking about um, Telstra and going back and showing them how regular Telstra was. Um, and people are going, how do you know that? And I went, but and they said, oh, can I do that moving forward? And I went, no, because it's now changed personality. And then- oh, They were probably disappointed with that. You set them probably, up, didn't you? I set <laughs> They them thought, up. oh, great. Dale's just shown us a new trading system. Yeah, well, Telstra, Telstra goes bullish every 15 weeks. Yeah. You know, it comes down to a low, it goes bullish mm. again. And stocks sometimes do that. Mm. But I know the All Lords did that. I know the All Lords was really regular from low to low at a certain Actually, period the of beautiful time. thing now is that um, with the mm. AI, everyone was fearful about the automated trading. Mm. But what the automated trading does is it actually makes it more repeatable. What yeah. we can, you know, initially it was more about, oh, People's asking questions, well, are they going to see how I'm trading? Will, will you know, someone tr- take my money if they know I'm trading? It's more about now we can actually see what they're doing yeah. because it's more far more contrived and controlled. But mm. not that we want it that way. We want it, you know, our market to be a fair and open market. Um, but with the rules, it, it actually can help traders in this sort of Yeah, well, market. that's what I want to get into. It's like when you've got the right rules... Mm. You've got psychology rules, you've got buy and sell rules, you've got analysis rules like momentum mm-hmm. and direction, strength, all of those ones we were talking about. How does that make a trader feel and how does it change their trading? I think it actually just, if you sit down at your desk and you know what you've got to do for the day, then, you know, that's important If if and, it's, and it makes people feel like they're actually, and I don't want to say the word control because, you know, we all have our control issues um, and it might yes, trigger something <laughs> in somebody. Um, but it's more about um, being clear, I guess, and having a direction. So if you can have that with your trading rules, then you're going to trade better. You're going to feel better about it and you're going to want to do it more and you're going to become more successful at it in a, in a shorter time frame, really. Is um, point. And I think it was a great mm. answer and I, I think, there's probably a, a little couple of little things I can add to that. But I remember years ago somebody said to me, I, because I, I said, mm. I think it was at an expo, I said, I go, you're not using any indicators. What's your favourite indicators? I go, I don't use indicators. And they go, well, how do you trade if you're not using all these indicators? And I go, easier. Mm. And they looked at me and they went, what do you mean? I said, the, they think the I, indicators I make said, it you're easy. overcomplicating the whole process. My trading mm. is really simple. Mm. And simple doesn't make it ineffective it makes it more effective and that's what i to me trading having the right rules and the right trading plan Mm. makes your life really simple it makes it really easy to trade and trade successfully but it gives you a lot more peace of mind Mm. and it gives you a lot more comfort and it gives you a lot more um profit absolutely Uh, and to me simplify your life because how many people do we meet that are trying to trade often. They just keep thinking, I've got to trade more. More trading doesn't mean make more money. Mm. It just means more hassles quite often because you've got a lot more transactions, a lot more tax issues. But then your brain's going all the time, whereas if you trust your rules 
you can trade bigger positions for a longer period of time and make shit loads more money. Mm. And the best traders we know trade less, not more. That's what it's about, so, isn't it, getting to that point? So to me, the key mm. to having good rules and why you should have good rules is to make your life simple and easy mm -hmm. and give you that confidence and that knowing that you'll be successful, not guessing or hoping you would be successful. Because a lot of people trade the market in hope, not necessarily with confidence like you were talking about. But to me is, is people who are listen, listening to this or watching, they're going, well, how do I get that? We've already told you. Test your rules. Mm. Make sure you've got the right rules. Test them, rules, back test them, try and break them, all that. Because I know in that course we talk about um, – I get emails from people saying, I just did this whole exercise, Dale, and I didn't make any money out of it. Why are you teaching me how to lose money? I went, no, I just told you what, I just showed you when things aren't working. Mm. So I can, if I showed yeah, you everything that is perfect, then you're not going to be a great trader because mm. always the one thing you always need to con and know when you're trading is you will lose at some stage. The goal is to be profitable overall, but you know each each trade you can lose. And so mm. the quicker you get to understand that, but our rules are there to minimise those areas, minimise the risk, and give us a higher probability of. Well, I think good I trades. think you've rounded it out beautifully with mm. that last part. You've anything else you yeah. want to add before we finish up on our podcast? Well, I was just going How to say awesome that awesome your co-host is. Yes, of course, and I was just going to say you're awesome too. I was just going to say that I'm. You can come for a drive with me. I'll change my rules just for you. How's you that? Change your rules. What are you going to do now? Well, I won't drive go like a grand. fast, slow, fast, slow, so that your head bobs up and down. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just take a different pace with you. That sounds driving Miss well, Daisy. You got precious. driving Mr. Dale. Da yeah, well, I know. I just like to get from A to B nice and safely. <laughs> so that's what I like to do because it's precious cargo when you can't when I'm in there. <laughs> and my wife likes to see me at home. But um, yeah. oh, look, I've really, en I'm, look, I've really enjoyed getting into this podcast. And while we haven't talked about specific buy and sell rules, and some people are going, "Well, just tell us the buy and sell rules." Da. It's not possible on hmm. a podcast because it needs to be broken down and broken down. And I know. People say, oh, I understand a trend line bit from your book, Dale. Mm. And I went, that's great, but you still don't know how to draw trend lines properly. That's because right. Because there's 30 something thousand words in my book, and the trend line section in the course, just the trend line section mm. in the course is 30,000 yeah. words mm. plus charts and exercises because you break, break it right down into smaller parcels and explain it all so people not only know what's there, they understand it, but they can also You're apply it. You're full of fun in facts, aren't you? Well, it is. It's, it's, well, I am. Thank you. I'm glad you've done that word count. Yeah. But it is. It's important because people go, oh, yeah, I've, I've watched a video. I know what trend lines are. And I went, no, you don't. Mm. And, you know, I know, you know, we've said to many, many times, you know, if you had 100 people in the room and tell them to draw a trend line, unless they're a student of ours, 99 will get it wrong mm -hmm. because they don't understand properly mm -hmm. and they don't have the right skill level on that because they've never broken it down mm -hmm. to use it in the right context, like you were saying, people try and do it on daily charts yeah, and you don't do that. So that's the, that's the good part about getting the right rules, testing the right rules, applying them, getting your confidence level up, getting your skill level up so that you have that knowing when you do trade. To me, that's really why you have rules. Okay. Oh, Fantastic. Do you want me to shut up now? Yeah, that'd be fantastic okay. as well. Cool. <laughs> All right, well, that's it for us on the stock market tr trading rules now. And look, as I said a little bit earlier, if you are – Somebody who's listening to this podcast, uh, you can watch it on YouTube. Just go to YouTube and type in Wealth Within TV and you'll be able to pick up all our videos. We've got a lot of these sorts of videos on there now um, and we're getting a lot of great feedback. But if you do want us to cover a subject, please let us know. We're happy to do that. If you're on listening to us on iTunes, just give us a five-star rating and a little bit of a review. We'd love that. That helps everybody else find our podcast. And remember to head over to talkingwealth.com. There are literally hundreds of great videos over there um, to learn about all sorts of things from business, um, investing, property, shares, you name it, it's there. Superannuation, like I've lost count of how many different interviews we've had, but we've had some awesome people mm. and we're continuing to interview brand new people um, all of the time. So head over to talkingwealth.com. Anything else you want me to say before I say goodbye, Janine? Um, that's probably it. Say okay. goodbye now. Well, that's it for us on Talking Wealth. Uh, you take care and have a great week. <laughs>